Evening folks, I'm doing this video to tell you that you have been lied to, again. Uh, shortly after the release of the national crime statistics about a week or two ago, there was an almost uh, national freak out by anyone who has a pulse, for understandable reasons. Violent crime has increased considerably over the past calendar year. Murder is up, uh, home invasions are up, hijacking is up. It's, it's a dire picture that's being painted of uh, what average South Africans can expect to live through. Uh, Shorten the heels of this revelation, our police minister and an NGO who shall not be named, decided to uh, issue a press release blaming these high levels of crime on civilian gun ownership, which makes no sense. And I'll explain to you why it makes no sense. I have read quite a few studies in my time doing this whole gun rights thing. And there's not a single study out there, not one, that has ever attributed firearms as the cause of violent crime. There's not one, and there never will be one. Correlation is a different issue. And by far the vast majority of studies I've read, credible, peer-reviewed ones, have found either no correlation between civilian farm ownership and uh, crime rates, or have found a strong negative correlation between civilian farm ownership and crime rates. What does strong negative correlation mean? It means that the more gun owners you have, or the more guns in private hands you have, the lower the crime rate is. It doesn't mean that the two variables cause each other. It just means that they go in opposite directions, like that, you know, on the graph. The one goes up and the other goes down at the same time. Uh, does this mean that uh, criminals are afraid of, of gun owners because uh, they're harder targets to hit and therefore more dangerous to rob? Sure, you know, that makes sense. It's definitely not the only cause for declining crime rates. I mean, you've got improved policing, uh, an improved justice system, maybe social projects, and improvement in the economy. Um, there's there's lots because crime is a complex thing and it has its roots in many different causal factors, which is why attributing it to a farm ownership is insulting and stupid and very much oversimplifying. Crime is caused by so many different things, socioeconomic factors, social factors, economic factors, uh, bad parenting, abusive parenting, the list goes on. I'm not a criminologist, so I'm not qualified to make uh, excessive statements about this sort of thing. But, I mean, you can go look it up yourself and you'll find out that not one of the causal factors of crime uh, is guns or gun ownership, uh, as far as respected academics are concerned. So why are you being told this? I mean, it fits some sort of narrative, doesn't it? Uh, and it's part of the whole gun control thing. The Farms Control Act is in the news again. They want to tighten restrictions on private farm owners for whatever reason. They want to take a broken system and make it more broken because the Farms Control Act has been almost uh, an administratable. Uh, it's a burden. It's an administrative burden that's costing the state millions of rands. And uh, we want to make it worse. We want to make some of the most restrictive and onerous firearms legislation in the world worse and impose this on a section of society that is the most law abiding of any. I believe in the late 1990s, I can't remember the exact year, but uh, Sidney Mufamadi made a statement to Parliament that gun owners contribute less than 0.01% of total crime in South Africa. Now that is pretty darn close to absolute zero. So why restrict farm owners more? Well, probably because there's an NGO out there who's pushing for it with lots of money from George Soros's Open Society Foundation, and this is their objective. And it's in the news because it's in the news. I was reading through The Spectator magazine uh, a week or so ago, and I came across a very interesting quote from a guy called Norman Cohn. Uh, his book was Warrant for Genocide. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. And it says, it is a great mistake to suppose that the only writers who matter are those whom the educated in their saner moments can take seriously. There exists a subterranean world where pathological fantasies disguised as ideas are churned out by crooks and half-educated fanatics for the benefit of the ignorant and superstitious. There are times when this underworld emerges from the depths and suddenly fascinates, captures, and dominates multitudes of usually sane people. 
And that's exactly what's happening in the media now pertaining the whole hysterical issue of gun ownership. <sighs> Folks, we can't restrict South African firearm owners more. We're already being double under some of the most restrictive firearm legislation in the world. There are criminals running around out there right now with AK-47s and government issue R4 and R5 assault rifles. Um, where do they get these guns from? Definitely not from people like me. Not from civilian gun owners by a long shot. These are all from struggle era caches. They're from uh, cross-border smugglers. They are stolen or through corruption uh, obtained from the South African police service and the South African military. And that is a true problem that needs to be addressed, not South African gun owners, not civilians. We are not the problem. We have never been the problem and we shall not be the problem. If you want to make this a safer country, make it safer for all law abiding citizens of all races, black, white, Asian, colored, whatever, to own weapons for their personal protection and for the protection of their families. Because the way things are going now, we need it. We absolutely do. To be legally, lawfully, and responsibly armed with training and competence. That would be a change I would welcome. And that is something I would like to see reported in the media. But until the narrative changes, I'm not going to hold my breath.